I'm Lindsay, hi. This is Saren, and this is Finn, and this is my husband, Justin. So, okay. Lindsay, tell us how you became an intactivist. Yeah, so I became an intactivist around when I was 16 or 17 because my mom didn't believe in circumcision, and I had no idea. I just have sisters, and I heard her arguing with my stepdad about circumcision one day in the car, and I was like, what? People don't believe in circumcision? So I went home and Googled it and I found Intact America and I immediately became an intactivist. So that was my journey with it. That was 12 years ago. And Justin? Uh, my journey began pretty much when I, uh, when I had my, when we had our first son, Saren, and uh, it was put in my face of uh, what to do and it was a very easy decision for me not to. And, um, and then a, a difficult process afterwards with my own personal um, uh, re reflections and, and having to accept what had been done to me. Um, so now I feel really strongly about it and I've been over the hump um, and uh, feel confident about speaking about it. Great, great. Yeah. And what do you tell men? What do I tell men? Um, I tell them just be strong, it's okay. It's happened to a lot of people and um, we can get over it and I'm also restoring, and um, it's also given me a sense of um, what I've lost. Because uh, as I've seen, as I see growth and um, and feel the comfort of just wearing the the, the restoring device, um, it brings me a lot of confidence that uh, it's possible and and that, that we can be okay. Yeah, and and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that that is really an important point uh, for men to know, and women, uh, ladies, uh, you can tell the man in your life or the men in your life or your brothers, your relatives, that uh, foreskin restoration is a real thing. It can be done and it's uh, it's not expensive. Uh, you can get a device for under $100 at uh, uh, TLC Tugger or DTR, Dual Tension Restore, that's DTR. Um, and uh, it once you get used to it, 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 it works. It actually works, ladies and gentlemen. I'm doing it too. Yeah, and it's important also to note that um, when, we, when, we, when, when, it, when it starts, it can bring a lot of emotion when you when you start the process. It can bring a lot of emotion, and that's a natural occurrence. And it, and it's enough to stop some people and uh, or make them angry. And, and and that's okay to feel angry too, because I felt a lot of anger. Boy, the first night that I had to face this all was a uh, I watched the documentary. What was the documentary, Liz? It was American Circumcision on Netflix. Yeah, I bawled my eyes out for hours. And, and 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 I had to turn off the documentary. Yeah, and and, was, uh, and and that was a process that that I had to go through. And it's it's uh, you know, and that's it's why, tough. and that's part of why we run into uh, resistance uh, in this movement. That it's a very bitter uh, truth for yeah. men yeah. to realize. And uh, men don't like feeling helpless. And uh, circumcision, uh, they took advantage of us when we were newborns, and it's not medicine, and never will be. No. No, it's not. Well, thank you, Justin and Lindsay. Uh, they drove over. Uh, they they drove uh, five hours, ladies and gentlemen, joined Bloodstained Men on the front lines. Is this Jed? And uh, Jed, uh, uh, we're live on uh, Facebook here. I'm just uh, letting our viewers. This is uh, Jed Stamus Circumcision. I didn't give my consent. Jed, let's let's for, let's turn and uh, look yeah. this way at the traffic and go ahead and talk. Oh, I'm wearing this not for myself but for other men. So you're intact. My, my, yeah, my wife couldn't make it. Uh, we have a daughter; uh, she's two years old. Um, so, yeah, we we had a long conversation last night about sort of the sex and and uh, she agrees with me that it's um, very the foreskin is very very important for sexual pleasure and, and there's an entire book uh, that discusses all of it in detail the yeah. sex as nature intended it actually there's two books there's sex as nature intended it and there's another one I'm not sure when it came out but it's called the real reason women don't like sex it's written uh from a woman's perspective and very interesting she's talking about i guess her experiences in america and in europe and how women in america tend to not just not enjoy sex as right much as right i mean it's proverbial it's proverbial that american women suffer pain from sex 
Good morning, Boston. Good morning, Boston. We are the bloodstained men. We travel from city to city around the United States, warning the American people that circumcision is not medicine. So this is whole mama Michelle, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, Facebook. Intact genitals are a human right. And she is just awesome. And I knew you'd be here. Uh, you've, you've just, uh, you've been in New Orleans with us. Uh, I think you've been to a couple of Super Bowls, the medical conventions. What motivates you? Why do you care so much, Michelle? Um, because babies can't speak up for themselves. And we need people to learn the truth about circumcision. And it stops when people learn the truth. So. And how did you learn the truth? I learned the truth. Well, my husband before, you know, when he was my boyfriend and we were pregnant with my first son, he was the first person who said to me that it was barbaric. And oh. I remember thinking like, well... Was that the first time you'd ever heard that? Yeah, that was the first time I ever heard that or anything negative about circumcision. And it really stuck with me. Um, and I started to see more and more like he's really right. It is like, you know, it is completely unnecessary. Um, and then I had my doctor, my OB, um, a lot of pushback from her. When I told her no, um, it was barbaric. Um, she was, uh, she had a lot of pushback. She started asking every appointment, um, told me it was my decision, not his. And I said, well, I really valued his opinion. And he's the father of his child, this child. So I'm not going to do something uh, to the baby that he thinks is barbaric. And I think because I said the word barbaric, she was really triggered as a performer of them. So she really pushed and pushed and pushed wow. me to do it. And that was, um, this all she, cre she created me. This is your midwife? This was, no, this is my OB. My oh, second pregnancy, oh, I had a wow. midwife and never went back to the your OB. OB? Yes. Wow, so she really pushed hard. Yes, and that's really what created me. Remember some of the me. things she said? Um, <clears throat> well, she told me it was cleaner. My son had a kidney issue and oh, um, she, she tried to use that. Luckily, we saw a um, urologist at Tufts that told us um, there is no risk of leaving his foreskin intact. Like there is no increased risk of UTI, and especially in relation to his kidney, he might have a increased risk because of his kidney. But it, it is of no relation to his foreskin, and removing his foreskin will not prevent that. Thank um, goodness you got yes. an honest uh, an honest uh, urologist. Yeah, thank God, because honestly, I I don't know what I would have done with just having my OB being so pushy and not having any other medical professional on my side. So you left her in the dust? Yes, I did, I did. Did she know why? Oh, she, yes, yeah, she knew. She knew, we talked about it. Um, <clears throat> it was at my six week appointment when she asked, uh, again, she asked right, the first thing she asked after I had him. You knew I had it was my a boy son. at that point? I knew it was a boy, it was the first thing I asked, even though I had told him no dozens of times. Um, then when he went to my six week checkup after having a baby, she asked um, to see his penis. Wow. I said no. How did she say it? She said, oh, can you take off his diaper and I'll check out um, the circumcision. First she said, I was like, you didn't circumcise him. She's like, let me see. I'm like, no. Wow, holy moly. No, and I told her right then, um, we won't be coming back. There's something perverted about yeah. these doctors and their obsession with boys' it is. genitals. It is, it's, it is. My, we switched eventually when um, our first pediatrician as well was very pushy on like diaper checks. And that was my pediatrician growing up. And um, they were recommended to us by the hospital, but you know, it's, they were very invasive. We switched doctors when I had my second son. He's never taken my kids off diaper, my kids diaper off once, not ever. He'll, not even the weight, nothing. It's really unnecessary. And um, only at my request at like a really bad butt rash. And still just looks at that closes it back up. It is not normal for doctors to be invasively checking your children's genitals. And Michelle, you have protested across the nation with bloodstained men. What motivates you to travel to, uh, I mean, I, we, you were in New Orleans with us. What motivates you to work that hard on this issue? Um, well, it's these medical professionals to let them know that people are not gonna sit down and take it. Um, most of my travel has been uh, surrounding the uh, medical conferences, the OBGYN conference and the American Academy of Pediatricians conference. And they need to know that we're not going to take this sitting down. Good. Thank you, whole mama Michelle, because intact genitals are a human right, ladies and gentlemen. Intact genitals are a human right. There's Dula Cynthia, Dula Cynthia, a veteran of uh, Bloodstain Man Road Cruise. 
You, you want to say a few words? We did just see a pregnant woman walking up the hill to go to her doctor's appointment, trying to give her some information, and she ran away as fast as she ran possibly away. could. Shaking. shaking her hand, head, going, I have to get to my doctor, I have to get to my doctor. I'm like, protect your baby from your doctor. She wouldn't even yeah. take a card. She wouldn't even take a card. Probably about eight or nine months pregnant. She's probably going to pop pretty soon, so... Yeah, they don't want the information. They absolutely do not want the information. It's so hard to get information into people's hands. They they literally put their fingers in their hands and start going, la, 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 la. We were just talking <laughs> to uh, Dr. Ronald Goldman yeah. about that, and he uh, called it the denial. He said it's a, uh, it's a survival instinct. Yeah, yeah, and it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's scary. So this hospital here, um, I actually was a patient here when I was a kid, and I've been to a lot of births here. I, I, I'm quite familiar with this hospital, and we protested out in front here a number of times too. I worked with babies, like I did a number of years, probably over a thousand babies in my lifetime, and I've seen the babies before and after circumcision, and they lose a lot of the light, a lot of the interest in the world. They just, as soon as they're circumcised, wow. the light goes out of oh their my eyes. God. They, um, That's heartbreaking. They don't I, make eye contact I, I can, with their mothers. I can mothers. feel the... Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and it's just absolutely abhorrent that they're still doing this to children. How did you first become aware of this issue? Through being a birth worker? Yeah. Birth yeah. Attendant? Well, I kept my son intact. He's 34. <laughs> and so I've been against this for a long time. But um, yeah, I kept my son intact. And then I started working as a birth doula later on. Um, and... I had so you kept your son intact before you knew the nuts and bolts of this controversy? Yeah, I just knew it was wrong. I just knew it was wrong. Did they try but, to talk you into it? No, I had a midwife. I had a natural birth. I got the hell out of the hospital as fast as I could. <laughs> so I, I literally went home when he was three hours old. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't play that game even back then. But um, yeah, so, but then uh, in 2006, I had two parents that asked me questions. Um, I was working as a birth doula and I had kept a lot of their babies intact through just what I did know but there was two questions that um, that were asked of me and one was about um, what are the functions of the foreskin and I was horrified to find out that I didn't know and that's how I found Intact America and started doing my research down that rabbit hole and then the other couple actually asked me about the studies in Africa um, saying that it lowered the rate of HIV AIDS, which I worked as a scientist from 1994 until 19, uh, 2005, and it made absolutely no sense to me that cutting off a body part would stop a virus. I mean, come on, seriously? This is ridiculous. No, and then I did the research on the numbers out of Africa, and I realized the studies were complete bullshit. <laughs> there you have yeah. it, ladies and gentlemen. Blunt Boston talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, the studies around it are utter bullshit. <laughs> yep. So do your research. Search PEPFAR. Look up PEPFAR. Find out the horrors of PEPFAR and how they used a, um, a clamp that to circumcise African babies that was completely blown out of existence here because it caused so much damage. And they took the, they, the these awful clamps and used them on African children. They damaged so many African babies, they had to stop that fire. Well, thank you, Dula yeah. Cynthia, and I will get back to uh, talking to other people, but uh, thank you for joining Blessed Men on the Front Lines, and uh, I know you've been on the road crew for several tours, and uh, you know there's always a spot for you on the road crew, awesome. Cynthia. Awesome. Cassandra Cross here from New Hampshire. And, uh, why do you feel so strongly about this issue, Cassandra? Oh, it came upon me as a surprise. I was on Facebook for birth. Uh, looking for birth people and I found you folks and um, at that point my son was um, intact but uh, 11 or 12 or something and my ex-husband and I just I credit my ex-husband with keeping our son whole I don't take responsibility for it I, I was I had that I think I had that mentality of oh well he's the man no 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 but my ex-husband broke the cycle of violence. Wonderful, wonderful. And How old is so, your son now? He's 20, and he's in oh, the Marines. Oh, wow. In, well, we're not supposed to say that. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sure he's uh, grateful that uh, you didn't let a doctor he, uh, do something really, really cruel to him. Well, he has been. I, I understand there's some woman in his life now. <laughs> and I hope that she's not... Um, 
you know, I can't use that phrase on a recording, I don't think, but I hope she's not one of those women who um, makes suggestions of amputation of body parts. Yeah, you're quite passionate about this issue. And he knows it, and he knows that he's supposed to um, talk to me if anything, um, if, if anybody suggests circumcision for him, or if he ever has a problem and somebody suggests... And we did get uh, disconnected uh, briefly for about, probably about 60 seconds, Cassandra. So just to clarify, uh, because I, maybe, maybe I misunderstood, but your son uh, did not... Uh, get he's circumcised. Whole. He's intact. He's whole. And he's now 20 years old. We won't go into the details of his life. But uh, congratulations on that, Mama. Um, but uh, you uh, you actually came to the uh, San Francisco Symposium in 2018. So you've been in this a long time. So I started to get involved and find you folks shortly before Jonathan died. Oh, okay. Jonathan, Jonathan Conti, Jonathan Conti yes. died in uh, May of 2016. So I would have been showing up around March of 2016. Awesome. But in answer to your original question, what made me passionate about okay. this was seeing the video. Oh, right. Seeing the horrific cutting that that doctors and nurses lie to mothers. About. They do lie. They lie to mothers. Oh, he they slipped are liars. right through it. No, he they didn't. Are liars. He did not. That's what made me. Passionate. It is absolutely a lie. Yeah. So what, do you remember that moment when you first saw a certain oh, video? Oh, well, I told you about it on a previous recording, you know, years ago, and and I do remember that moment. And my my husband and my children were downstairs, and I went downstairs. Here I go. Here I start up again. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I went okay. downstairs yeah. and I, I wrapped my arms around my husband, and we're not married anymore. But and but look at what it does to me still. I wrap my arms around him and I'm, I said, "Honey, I'm so sorry for what was done to you when you were a baby." Yeah. And that was it. Yeah, there was, yeah. That was, it's, there was no turning yeah. back from that yeah. moment on. So while we were talking to the police is what Cassandra is telling us. Uh, a motorist uh, uh, drove by and didn't know if, uh, if the police had a problem with us or not. And they, and they yelled out, they're, they're heroes, referring to us. They're heroes. We were talking to the police and, yeah. and uh, a car full of people drove by. Oh, just one guy in a red Volvo, I think. Uh -huh. I think it was a red Volvo, like a wine, pretty wine colored Volvo. Did you get the license plate? No, I didn't. And he, he had his windows down and he saw that the police had been called and he howled out of his car window. He said, officer, they're heroes. That's awesome. That's wonderful. <laughs> that That's great? wonderful. There are people who think that standing on the street corners doesn't do anything. But how else are you going to reach people? You know, the, the pregnant girl walking up the street who, who just walked out of a hospital and found out she's having a boy and sees this and, and, and is open to education. And Cassandra, I always say protests work. If protests didn't work, dictators wouldn't hang protesters. There you go. Pleased to introduce you to my friend uh, Mike Nass, Michael Nass. Hey, you Michael, doing? you're a long time intactivist. Yep. Um, what motivates you? Trying to save babies, you know, trying to save one baby from what I went through. That's that's it. So if I see someone just take one second to think about, you know, a sign that we're holding that is enough to, you know, I saw a 13 year old girl, maybe a young teenage girl look at a sign and just think like kind of I could saw her brow furrow so if that affects her when she's ready to have a baby and that changes her choice yeah that's yeah, why i'm here yeah catch them when they're young yeah thank you mike nass thank you for joining us on the front lines in bridgeport connecticut and you were out here with us uh i think four years ago when we were in new hampshire yep. up in well manchester connecticut actually. okay oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. thank you michael nass you got it thank you brother k and ladies and gentlemen let me introduce you to liz hey there liz uh we are uh here live uh, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Tell us, tell us why you're out here with Blood Stain Men. Uh, there's a myriad of issues, really, but mostly because we just need to educate people on a better way for us to be doing things. Lots of other people have health concerns because of this, um, well into their adulthood. I've got health concerns because of other people having to deal with their struggles. Um, yeah, so it's like there's lots of different things going on that it's really not good. There's no reason for us to be doing this to kids and then or anybody. 
for real, unless you want to make that choice for yourself once you're of age. Yeah, yep, once you want to make that choice. But Addie, come here. Do you want to say hi? I saw you popping up in the background. And here's hi. Addie, ladies and gentlemen, hi. young intactivist. <laughs> Addie, thanks for coming out with Bloodstained Men today. Yeah, thank you for helping. And you were, you were uh, in the group photo as well. And we're live. We're live on Facebook right now with Addie. Addie, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old and a young intactivist, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Addie. She actually <laughs> even has her own Facebook. And oh, I should point out also, Addie, this is not your first Bloodstained Men protest. You protested with us four years ago, didn't you? I don't remember, actually. Yeah, yeah, well, did. your mom We're remembers and yep, yeah, I think we have the pictures <laughs> to prove it. Yeah, um, yeah. What is the chief obstacle that you see for intactivists? The chief obstacle, I guess, is probably trying to unravel what people have already been taught. You know, there's people shouting at us about how it's cleaner and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, there's just a lot of myths. And, you know, one of the signs over here says it's one of the greatest medical frauds. And it's just true. It created a lot of money for a lot of people. And they... It gets a little weird when you think about how they actually are taking foreskin to use it in beauty care products and that sort of thing. And it's just kind of not, doesn't seem like what it's supposed to be. Is it supposed to be something we're monetizing off of or is it supposed to be a health concern? Because it doesn't seem like a real health concern. Right, right. Yeah. And as you know, men around the world are intact. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is something that as far as I'm concerned, I haven't made a lot of trips around the world, but as far as I'm like what I've read, it seems like this is very concentrated here. Okay. I, I didn't even notice the front. Got it? Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, let me give you our card. Oh, I, I mean, I honestly thought this was like a joke at first, but no. No. Um, it gets people's attention. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely baby baby boys are born perfect. Right. Baby boys are born, born perfect too. All mammals are born with foreskin. Females have foreskin and we get to keep ours. And American doctors have convinced parents that this is medicine and that it's what's best and what's right. And the reality is that our grandfathers and our great grandfathers were all intact with no problems. Uh, se sex as nature intended it is not happening for the majority of Americans who have been circumcised with their partners. All the information is on that card. I will, I will check it out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank having you. an open mind. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dara, Dara, that's really wonderful just to have uh, moments like that on the front lines, and it happens all the time. But uh, he, he, uh, he was confused and a little amused at first, but then he saw that this is dead serious uh, educational outreach out here on the front lines. It is deadly serious. Babies are dying. Babies' lungs collapse on the table. Uh, babies hemorrhage in the days following their circumcision. Babies grow up to be men someday who try to have sex with their partners and can't because of what was taken off of their body. And the parents, the parents who go on social media and say, my son is fine, my son is circumcised and fine, they don't know that. Your son is not going to tell you how his penis works in the bedroom with his partner. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that's basically just a defensive talking point, but they, they're just bluffing. Thank yeah. you, Derek Connolly. Thank you for joining Bloodstained Thank Men you. on the Thank front lines. why this issue matters to you and your family. Oh, it's so important. I mean, it's, it's, I had to get involved. Once I found out about it and the truth about it, I couldn't just stay silent. And um, even though there are people who wish that I would, I just couldn't. Um, our boys deserve better. And I believe you were telling me that um, when uh, either you or your husband uh, when uh, when you looked at the uh, video uh, while you were pregnant, uh, couldn't finish it and broke down in tears. No, I, I could. In fact, I had to stop researching until after I was pregnant because I was like, well, I've learned enough to know that I'm not doing this. <laughs> we're not doing this. It doesn't and then, take much, does it? But it, really. But then after that, it was like everything you learn after that is just one more reason after another why it's just horrible. <laughs> so we uh, we protect our children and. Um, 
and let them have the bodies that they were born with. So my name is Corinne. I have two sons and a daughter and I knew before I had my first baby that cutting infant gen genitals is wrong. It's a sex crime and I want to make sure that everybody knows that so that my children don't have to stand out here and pick it to educate people. How did you know that? I think common sense and like my mother instinct knew that. But I continued to research. Like I knew that it was wrong when I first was trying to get pregnant, whether I was going to have a boy or a girl. Did you have any fights with friends, relatives, doctors, etc.? I've lost. I've lost a lot of friends. Wow. And in the hospital, my first son was born at the hospital. My my younger two were born at home. They asked so you me. Have three sons. I have two sons and a daughter, two all intact. Daughter. All three of my children have their foreskin. And, um, and and parenthetically, uh, many people don't understand that girls also have foreskin. That's right. The yep. littoral hood. Yep, Same absolutely. Thing. And right, my but, daughter, my sons deserve their whole body as much as my daughter does. So um, uh, that's interesting. You've lost a lot of friends. Any anything, uh, any particular friend or uh, episode come to mind? Um, it's really actually heartbreaking because it's hard to stay close with someone who believes that this is okay, who believes that it's all right to sexually assault a brand new baby and change their lives forever. It's not medicine. What about family members? I've been really fortunate that my family, my own mother has even shared some bloodstained men posts. Wow. I'm so incredibly what, What's her name? Give her, give her a shout out. My mom is Noreen and she's amazing. Hello, Noreen. And uh, thank you, Noreen, for uh, sharing and supporting bloodstained men. That's awesome. She loves her grandbabies, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 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 Corin, um, parents love moms. Moms and dads, but moms have a special bond. That baby has come out of your body. American moms are being deceived and betrayed. And that's the it's thing. It's heartbreaking. It's enraging. It's infuriating. It's just not fair. And I can't tell you how many moms I've talked to that find out after the fact and the hard way when something goes wrong. And, and the other part of it is, is sometimes they're not going to know until their child is already a grown man. And he may not tell him. And either. he's not going to tell his mom and he may that not it know. hurts every time I get an erection and I can't be intimate with my partner. Isn't that amazing? And we see it all the time. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because that's failed marriages in our country, right? Number one thing that ends a relationship. So you're out here with Bloodstained Men uh, in... Uh, Fall River? Yeah. Fall River, Massachusetts today. Yeah. Educating people. I've given out so many cards. I can't tell you how many people have said thank you. Thank you for what we're doing. One gentleman said, it's too late for me. And I said, will you take a card and pass it on maybe your sons, your grandsons, your friends' children? He's like, I absolutely will. And I gave him two cards. And I believe that he will share that information. Thank what you. we're doing is making a difference. Thank you, Corin. Thank you for joining Blessed Amen on the front lines of the struggle for human rights in the United States. We have no moral ground to stand on to preach to other nations about human rights when we're abusing and violating 100%. the rights of our own sons. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for joining Blessed Amen and their friends.